Good evening, good morning, or maybe it's good afternoon. Welcome back to Passion World Talk Radio Network, a wholly owned subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Educate, enlighten, and entertain. And this morning on State of a Current Affairs, hosts Lillian Caldwell and Vicki Esther Chang will continue the discussion they started yesterday talking appropriately enough about climate change and eventually wandering our way over to the artificial intelligence glasses that invade your privacy. So let's begin. Good morning, Vicki. Hi, um, Lillian. It's a wonderful time to be connected with you. And I really always um, thank God and, um, you know, uh, always thank our lives and the opportunities and never take anything for granted. Um, even if it's hardship, it's difficulty, you always learn from that. And I take um, every opportunity as a blessing, you know, for us to be able to come together. Um, it's always such a blessing, you know, to have this special connection with you across the globe. And I'm really talking across the globe, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and that's why, again, um, state of our affairs and state of current affairs is so important for us because we're talking about things that tie us together. Um, and, you know, in the heat of um, the American general election that a lot of people say this is the most important le in like election in their lifetime, which every every election they say, they say yes, that is the most yeah, election. Why isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would think that, but one thing rings true is commonality ties in with every human being because we return to the earth one day we breathe the same breath we need oxygen to live uh, we need a clean environment we need food um, we need energy we need calories that's that's the same for every human being i mean there isn't a human being that say i don't need oxygen you're right and uh, right. i will return to, to the earth what I'm yeah. saying is um, there's so much more oneness and commonness in us than we can ever imagine. So, you know, for us, state of our current affairs, um, Lillian and myself, we show um, that uh, we have these common issues and topics that keep us at night, um, regardless of where, of where you are uh, across the Pacific, across the Atlantic. So that makes state of our current affairs much more important. I mean, 10 years ago, we may not have a show like this. We may not even be connected like this, Lillian. Yeah. Um, 20 years ago, it was impossible. So yeah. I, I think with technology, we get to know each other and understand each other much better uh, through conversations like this. And I call upon all listeners and all viewers to write to Lillian uh, and Passionate World Talk Radio, come on to their website and the digital radio and come on to uh, my platform, uh, the Platinum platform, if you like. But go to Lillian Cardwell first, um, my um, very um, precious, treasured um, collaborator and co-host over here, um, Lillian. Um, write to her. Tell her about what keeps you up at night. Um, I think a lot of us... Um, we we have got so much things that keep keep us at night. I mean, I can't even start to tell you before we dive into the topic today, um, Lillian. Um, we talk about um, struggles of relationships, struggles of family, struggles of health, struggles of money, struggles of needing to meet expectations, and struggles of just going forward. I mean, there's so much things that keeps us at night. Um, Lillian, I can't even start to say there's so much more commonalities that that, that we, we, we can't even start talking about it. But today, um, let us go to this very important topic that is very close to my heart. Um, and it is a continuation and enlargement of what we talked about yesterday. We talked about climate change. We talked about the ecosystem of climate change. And ladies and gentlemen, as I dive in again to talk about climate change, let's review this as something educational for us, right? And we talk, we, were, we were talking about um, 15, 20 years ago when the polar bears were, were said to be drowning already. And I, and I did say like, what has polar bear got to do with my life? I don't care. I mean, yes, they're cute. Um, they're fluffy. 
um, well, they die, I'm sad, but you know, you know, my life goes on. But hey, 20 years and 15 years later, um, we really feel the effects of climate change and whatever words we call it by whatever name we call it, climate change, extreme weather, extreme temperature, um, extreme climate, um, unpredictable climate, whatever word you use it in your hometown and your, in your community, community, it is the same. And I read the news today, you, you are, America is going to face another huge hurricane, uh, Milton, I think. Um, yes. Helen just Category crossed. five. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, hur hur hurricane Helen just passed by and it caused a lot of destruction. And and, and I think a lot of unpredictable uh, uh, weather patterns are emerging right now. And we talked about uh, my personal experience um, in Switzerland, where I witnessed firsthand the white ice cap mountains are turning brown, gray, and green. And also, I'm um, talking to the farmers in France at the groceries um, supermarkets, whereby you know you've got four small retail farmers with a little bit, bit piece of land, and they're telling you they're struggling because they're selling their their little bit of tomato, organic tomato, or their organic strawberries. They, they tell you that hey, they're making a lot of losses because um, the crops are dying or the crops are not growing. So that's where we left off. And we talked about whatever goes up into the air when the ice cap melts uh, uh, or the glaciers melt, right? You fly, you get flights. And when they dry up, they evaporate up into the sky. The water molecules got to be transported somewhere. It drops, collected, it drops somewhere down onto America or in Asia or in the Pacific Ocean. And there you've got um, rising sea levels. Uh, and flooding, and of course, hurricanes like what you see in the U.S. So that was a recap for yesterday. And for today, uh, Lillian, very quickly, for the next 20 minutes, I would like to talk about um, e-waste, a huge topic. Um, e what's e-waste? E-waste is a, uh, a consequence of commoditization. And the word commoditization is a big, fat word. Commoditization just means we are consuming the commodities, we're not thinking. We change our handphones. Okay, there's iPhone 1 and then iPhone 2, and then we struggle, and then we save the money for $2,000 for our iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone 8, iPhone... And now you've got iPhone iPhone 14 plus, you've got the Samsung, and then you've got whatever computers you've got right here. Look at this. This is a gamer um, laptop. Right, and you've got the version one and the version two, and you tell yourself, hey, this is too slow. I gotta keep up with the faster version. Now that's called commoditization. Um, and, and we forget that we in in our power as consumers and the as the end of retailers. Yes, we talked about inflation. That's another topic we talked about. Um uh electronic products, the prices are dropping like crazy because of competition. And because of mass production, um, we, in economics, um, you know, when you've got mass production, your know, total average cost of producing every unit drops dramatically. The curve drops down. So you are able to purchase at a much lower cost. Maybe that cost you like $2,000 before, 10 years ago. Now it costs probably $800. So that's commoditization. And I'm really going to say that um, we are victims or we are culprits or we are the criminals of commoditization. And e-waste we're talking here. Let me just um, quick read um, for all our listeners and audience. And you can find this article um, courtesy of uh, Lillian um, and um, Passionate World Talk Radio. You can find this article, which I'm going to read from World Health Organization. By the website www.who.inc slash newsroom um, and you will be able to find search their e-ways what are e-ways e-ways is one of the fastest growing solid waste streams in the world in 2022 an estimated 62 million tons of e-ways were produced globally and that's only in 2022 only 22.3 was documented 
as formally collected and recycled. And that's only 20, 20 uh, so, and that's only 22.3%, and that's less than um, a quarter uh, of our waste. Lead is a common substance released into the environment when e-waste is recycled. And informal e-waste recycling activities may, set, may have several health effects. Children, pregnant women are particularly vulnerable to the effects of e-waste. Every year, millions of electrical and electronic devices are discarded as products break, become obsolete, or are thrown away. Now, I can continue to talk about the magnitude of e-waste and then the exposure of um, health problems to e-waste. But let's talk about uh, from the fundamental point of view as a consumer, right? When we just, um, I mean, I've got like four or five phones right now um, at this point, you know, my husband's got two phones, I've got two phones and we just changed our phones. So I am a criminal of producing e-waste. And then um, I will leave it at the house or if we're, if we're callous, we throw it out um, into the dustbin, the trash can. Um, now, I'm going to say in a huge macro sense, in a huge macro sense, if we read the news, a lot of countries do collect e-waste, like Japan, Korea, um, European countries, and even America. When they collect these waste because they cannot be incinerated, they have little kind of dustbins and little kind of trash at the shopping uh, complexes at the malls. They say, throw in your batteries, throw in the waste that you do not want in there. So that is the effort we're talking about, 22.3% that is collected and formally documented how much weight of e-waste that you can collect from a particular country. So they have documented it uh, and it's about um, 60 uh, million tons um, that is being produced in 2022 around the world. Now think about that, where do they go? Because they cannot be incinerated. Incinerated means it's got a battery in there, you cannot burn it. Because if you burn it, it's going to leak all the toxins in the air. And when you breathe it, you've got cancer. Um, and you can't recycle them because they're they're at the end of their useful life. And if you leave it there um, in landfill, they leak out their chemicals and they go into the ground and they affect your ground water. So what these countries do, if they are developed countries, they've got a particular system of getting rid of the e-waste because they've got huge containers that say, hey, throw your batteries here, right? And throw your glass here and your paper, etc. They try, we try, on an institutional level, we try. And they, what do they do? They get packed into boxes and then they get, they get into huge containers and they get shipped out of the country. And where do they go? They go to countries that would like to receive them at, in, in the form of containers whereby these countries are, uh, these countries are paid a particular amount of dollars for per ton of the e-waste. And which are the countries that receive them and they agree to receive them? They're usually African countries, third world countries, etc. We can go to Cambodia, Myanmar, Malaysia, uh, African countries. And then what happens? It's dumped. So if you look at um, uh, if you look at the internet uh, in your research or the YouTube, um, there are lots of people in these countries because they are the people living in there along the coastal areas because when the ship comes in, they just dump and you've got a settlement over there. They're usually third world countries. Um, the people are experiencing a lot of health problems and it starts with, for example, your skin start to itch and then your organs start to break down and people start to die. And we don't document this because there are news that is not palatable for the mainstream uh, media. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, today, today I'm just going to talk about the tip of the problem. We're not going to talk about the whole ecosystem of how e-waste travel because we can talk about it for weeks. 
But think about that. We all have a responsibility to our electronic gadgets in our hands. Well, you can give it to someone who needs it. Or, yeah, or you can sell it, right? Um, you don't dumb it. There are many ways of um, kind of uh, upcycling or reusing it or giving it as a gift to someone who needs it. So I'm just going to say this is a problem that is so huge that we can we can continue to talk about it. Uh, it is an introduction to the big topic of e-waste that I hope Lillian and I can introduce and give information, if not education, to the listeners and um, our global audience, uh, because we all have a role to play in being responsible to commoditization. Um, having said that, uh, Lillian, um, I'd like to continue with similar topic. Um, having said that, again, this is a topic that is so related to the environment, climate change, etc. Um, climate change, change is one of uh, the, the our responsibility to. Um, I want to talk about um, this issue. Uh, and I'm just going to introduce a few topics to our, uh, I would say, terms uh, to our viewers and our listeners um, and be aware um, of your environment and how you can be responsible for the environment so that you can live a happier life and a healthier life. The first thing I'd like to introduce is the word which is very huge right now in Europe. It is called forever chemicals. And forever chemicals, um, it is signified by the, ter uh, the acronym uh, PFAS. Um, and PFAS, just know that it stands for forever chemicals. There's a chemical name uh, for it. PFAS stands for poly fluoroalkyl substances or PFAS. Now there are a group of chemicals that are used in manufacturing and are added to a consumer product since 1950s. And they are only recently discovered and given a name in recent years by the Germans. And where do they exist? And what is what does it, what kind of consequence it has on us? as consumers. Maybe they're not related to us. No, they are. They are added into our chemicals or through the chemical process or manufacturing process in curtains, carpets, upholstery, paint, varnish, um, chemical treated um, wooden beds, tables, furniture, paper, everything, your pots and your pans. Now, for uh, PFAS, um, Forever Chemicals, um, in short, the name for to educate um, the consumers in Europe found by the, um, the Germans, um, uh, there are groups of chemicals that can never be destroyed and they've existed since 1950s, but very little uh, research has been done. But I would say this, um, prior to forever, forever Chemicals, and the word Forever Chemicals means they can never be destroyed. They are in your homes. And when you find that you've got asthma, you've got lung disease, you've got kidney failure, you've got cancer, you've got chronic diseases, they are these are the causes, all right? Because PFAS are such a huge thing. We are starting to give names to, to some of the chemicals that we're living. And then we are finding a lot of diseases right now in current modern lifestyles that never existed um, I don't know, in a, in a forefather's times, right? So no, PFAS, in short, in retail terms called forever chemicals are already in our life right now. But I'd like to talk about two of the more common understanding, the VOCs and formaldehyde. And I think VOCs and formaldehyde is something that we all know already. But I'd like to, again, talk about them because we have, as consumers, to make sure we, are, we understand its effects and we demand companies to be more responsible in their manufacturing and production processes in, and to source for responsible supply and sources. Now, what is 
um, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. Homes. Um, how can I know if my home has unhealthy formaldehyde? Homes with smokers. Homes with new construction materials. Homes with new products. Homes ha that has cabinets, furniture, plywood, particle block, uh, particle boards, laminate, laminated flooring, or fabrics such as those that is used in curtains, drapes, furniture, paints, pesticides, cosmetics, detergents, etc., etc., etc. Um, now, these are formaldehyde. Now, I'm just going to give one example. In Singapore, um, the latest news in 2024 is that we are going to rule out formaldehyde in internal paints because formaldehyde causes um, eye diseases. Um, it causes lung diseases, um, internal organ failure. Of course, it causes cancer. And formaldehyde, um, and one of the things I'm told when, when, when I'm in Europe, uh, Europeans are so uh, as, so um, environmental conscious, uh, particularly in the way they live. Um, they have ruled out certain chemicals in their production uh, process and their supply chain. But we're seeing a lot of countries do not rule them out because it's more expensive for consumers uh, to select products that do not have these chemicals. So formaldehyde are things, for example, when you buy... Um, a furniture from Ikea. It comes with a box, right? Paper box. You got to use your razor, slash it, open it up. And the first smell you smell when the box is open up and then you say, wow, that smells like new furniture. Wow, I love it. But hey, that's off guessing. Because the wood inside that has been treated gives out formaldehyde plus volatile organic compound, which I'm going to talk about, which is called VOCs. So some of these chemicals, we do not know. We unwittingly say they are the smell of new house, but they're the smell of chemical. You need to let your construction, your renovation, and your furniture off gas for one week, two weeks, if it's a new constructed house, for up to like, I don't know, four months before you live in there. So do not think that that smell you go into a new house smells of, hey, that's mint because that's a new house. No. And when you get upholstery, when you redo your furniture, right? When you redo your sofa, that's a lot of formaldehyde in there. You've got to wash and wash and wash. But you know, Lillian, some of these can't be washed away because it's already built in there in, a, in their uh, production function. So until and unless people like us, we start educating, giving information to consumers to demand um, a manufacturing processes to push upstream, uh, manufacturers do not have an obligation to consumers unless it is regulated. In countries whereby there's no regulation and no enforcement and no consequence, um, companies will still use the cheapest form of supplies for production and then consumers like us will pay for it and 10 20 years down the line when you live in the house and then you suddenly feel that hey that's it i'm suffering from this kind of disease i'm suffering from that kind of disease and when a doctors tell you oh we've discovered a new disease that's not a discovery that's a created disease <laughs> So, um, Lillian, it, it's a bit hard for us to stomach because I know if you're having a breakfast over there in the U.S., I know it's not something you want to listen to, but these are real facts. And that's why state of current affairs is important because we tell you the truth with honesty. And the next article, very quickly, I want to share. It's um, You can look at the U.S. Production Agency, which is the EPA. I think Americans know it. Go to your own EPA website, which is www.epa.gov slash indoor air quality website. Okay. They, and this is something that I want everyone to understand. This is huge, but we all overlook it. Mothers, teachers, sisters, 
brothers, granddaughters, grandchildren. You have got a responsibility for VOCs in your homes because they are going to kill you in time to come. All right, what are volatile organic compounds, VOCs? Very quickly, very shortly, the definition is volatile organic compounds, VOCs, are emitted as gases from certain solids or liquids. VOCs include a variety of chemicals, some of which may have short and long-term adverse health effects. Concentrations of many VOCs are consistently higher indoors, up to 10 times than outdoors. Of course, because you outdoors, there's natural air. Um, VOCs are emitted by a wide array of products, numbering in the thousands. Examples include paints, lacquers, paint strippers, cleaning supplies, pesticides, building materials, furnishings, office equipment such as copiers, printers, correction fluids, carbonless paper, carbon paper, graphics, craft materials such as glues, adhesives, um, permanent markers, etc. etc. I mean they are they are they are widely in the ingredients in household products, in cleaning products, disinfecting products, cosmetics, degreasing, um, hobby products, etc. etc. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now this really sounds unpalatable. But VOCs, we are living with them already. Now, some people succumb to it. Some people don't. Um, some people have adverse health reactions to it. I mean, I am one of them. So um, I say that because I am particularly um, sensitive when I enter into a place whereby there's new paint or there's new furniture because I will start to become nauseous immediately and my body starts to react my t cells starts to tell me there's an enemy trying to invade into my system so a lot of people actually do have different kinds of um a reaction some people don't because they do not have a ding 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 um you know effect like the t cells coming out um, as the army to tell you that hey something is invading into my system but it may come later on so uh, when if you've got uh, your asthma uh, you've got your breakout in your skin, uh, especially a breakout in your skin. It's telling you your liver cannot uh, detox the toxins that is coming into your biological system. So uh, very quickly to you, um, a couple of information of education here for all of us to revise. I, I'm very sure a lot of you know them already, but I'm here to remind everyone never to um, let your guards down. VOCs, formaldehyde, and something that the Germans have come up with called Forever Chemicals, which is PFAS, which is a group of chemicals that can never be destroyed forever. They are called Forever Chemicals, and we are living in them. So when we as consumers, we have the power to select. Um, and in Europe, if you live in Europe, in Germany, in France, etc., you... The products are actually graded, grade A, grade B, C, D, A+, plus, etc. To tell you, um, these products are free from what kind of chemicals. And of course, the prices accordingly are different in the different categories. So until and unless consumers like us come together with great education, we push as either consumers with our consumer dollar or as shareholders, um, responsible shareholders, uh, uh, you know, to our companies, uh, are we able to change the upstream uh, manufacturing and production um, to make them more environmentally sustainable? Over to you, Lillian. I hope that is something that's illuminating um, as a reminder to all of us, Lillian. I think people forget that all those sprays, sprays. That spray into the air, so, or the little Hand things products. they put into the um, wall sockets to freshen up the air. Those are all chemicals. Now I'm allergic to fragrances, to the smell, so I get sick. So if I walk through a store that has 
candle scents. Fragrances. Candle or scents. Fragrances of any time. I can get sick all over the place. I, I get sick too. <laughs> and people don't seem to understand that. Or you're standing in a small enclosed space like a elevator. Elevator. Working on an escalator or even on a plane, train, automobile, or bus. Folks, this is serious. And yet these smells linger in your home. Yes. There's a reason why during the spring and fall, people should be encouraged to open their windows and let the air blow through their abodes because everybody knows that during the winter it's too cold and during the summer it is too hot. Yeah. Now, if you live near a farming community or where there are lots of horses, you will smell manure permeate the air, whether you like it or not. The same thing with the greasy spoon effect from McDonald's or Wendy's that have all this grease hanging in their French fries and burgers and onion rings and everything else. And you have to understand that to a lot of people, these smells are deadly. It's almost as bad as having a peanut allergy and not being told there are peanuts in the sauce or penis influence. So you really have to understand that when you're in a, an enclosed area, there's no place for these smells to dissipate or be replaced by clean air. That's why flying in a plane during the COVID epidemic was so dangerous. Yes. Because any germs that people brought in with them inside the cabins was recycled through their circulatory system. And that's why instead of taking even Lysol spray, it's still a chemical. It's still under pressure. That's how you create the spray. And even the so-called spray bottles where you pump it, and there's not supposed to be any chemicals. There is a reaction. There is a smell to Windex. There is a smell to that yes. paint cream or ointment that you smear all over you. I used to get sick when I smelled cannabis, marijuana, when I went into a dorm because my system could not handle it. So just remember you're masking an odor that's why during the Middle Masking Ages, order. perfume was so important. They were masking their body odors because they did not believe in taking baths. <laughs> or they created a lot of sauces to pour over their rotten meats because they didn't have any form of drying their meat or preserving it from going moldy. It's amazing yeah. we managed to pass through all these earlier years of civilization without wiping out anybody, which is a testament to our strong constitutions. So remember this when you plug in those things that are made from oil. That's why they have potpourri, which are dry herbs, but they're still very, very pleasant or not because even the dry potpourri uh, has an effect on me. It's a type of fragrance. And you have to remember not everybody has cast iron noses and that it does affect them one way or another. I know that I have friends who use scented candles. Vanilla, cinnamon, right? Chemicals. Or they use the different oils that you can purchase online in the supermarket to create scents used to be the rage during the 90s and 80s or incense where people burn in churches or when they're smoking marijuana and they do not want the smell out. So it's like taking a breath mint to camouflage that you've been drinking alcohol and alcohol has its own smell too along with wine. That's why the connoisseur smell your wine first and then taste it. There's a reason for it. So all this 
is related. And then after a while, your nose gets tired and you get nose fatigue, or meaning that you've gotten so used to smelling it that you don't yes. smell it any longer. <laughs> yes, exactly. So there, there's a reason why people react and there's a reason why scents are used, but all you're really doing is masking the unpleasant odors that don't have a place to drift out from or around. That's why when you walk through a swamp, you gag because of all the decay. Or remember the great New Jersey swamps and you drove by it and that she smelled the sulfur? Yes, well, we used to drive through the sulfur fields, as we called them, to get from New Jersey into New York City. So there's a reason here. And just imagine if you couldn't purify the air in which you breathe all over the world. Can you imagine some of the scents you'll pick up on besides the animals and baby's poo-poo? Yeah, and you know, Lillian, um, you're absolutely right because there are something, yes, your nose get fatigued, nose fatigue, and and then you you kind of um, mask, it. Uh, yeah, you're right about masking over, it doesn't go away. You're it just doesn't masking. go away, it just stays there. Yeah, so, so it's so important for us to have, um, like EPA, it says, um, the new, here in the website, it says, um, Indoor chemical is 10 times more than outdoor chemical because indoor, like what you say during the winter or during, during the summer, your windows are closed. Now, therefore, it's so important for you to open your windows. And, and if you do, um, if you are able to afford um, an air purifier or air ionizer, um, if you could, that may help a little but really nothing beats the nature um, A walk in the park or a walk um, in the woods. Um, nothing beats uh, nature. And um, you're absolutely right. Um, these are very um, thing, important things to note. If you are getting into a new house, you're buying a new furniture, um, you're getting new uh, cosmetics, make sure you demand and you purchase with your consumer dollar to purchase and to select uh, companies that are using environmental conscious practices. And that means they do not use chemicals. Uh, and of course, the easy word is organic. Um, you know, you can say it's organic, it's natural. Um, this is one indication, but how organic or how natural it is, perhaps it's just a marketing gimmick, but really you can go into and decide um, some of the companies uh, where your dollar should go. I think that's um, something that I want to talk about as in the consumer power. If we all come together with our consumer knowledge and we start to select uh, uh, where our dollar should go and which company we support by purchasing their products. I think it goes along with uh, Lillian. I think so too. So let's wrap it up. One of the things people you need to do our call to action to you is to contact us. Either email us at pwrnetworkllc at gmail.com or text us at 484-364-1032. And let us know what particular matter you want to address that you feel hasn't. Wherever you are in this world, or maybe the next, or in the universe, space stations are welcomed just as well. And you <laughs> should let us know what you're thinking. Because you can make a difference. And you can make a change. It only takes one small little drop of a stone, a pebble, a thought. And the ripples keep expanding forever. They don't stop. Lillian, can I just... Are that pebble. Lillian, can I just make a, a, a little shout out to the listeners and to yourself? Um, if you find that you're sick, right, you should get a blood test and to see what kind of chemicals are, is in your blood. 
Could it be mercury? Could it be lead, um, etc.? You know, your your nutritionist and your doctor should they be able to run a test because these are chemicals that is entering into your bloodstream from the environment. So um, if you are sick, um, the first thing is do a test of your blood. And before you talk about your lung, you know, uh, your kidney, um, your heart, I think it's important to see what is inside your body, um, what chemicals has entered in there, and then take it away. That could be one of the root causes of what you're suffering. And I think um, for Lillian, um, uh, for the segment of target um, audience and listeners, I think this is this is a timely reminder. It's a very apt reminder for people to really think about the environment that they're living. Um, thank you, sir. I'm so sorry, Lillian, back to you, but I think it's so important for It is important. Listeners. And you go to the doctor to make sure your health is good. You go to a psychologist to make sure your mental health is good. Women go to mammograms, gynecologists. Men go to the doctor for prostate. And you really need to add this to your list because it is a matter of life and death. That's why they issue gas masks during World War I and World War II, especially <laughs> among the civilian population. There's a reason for it, folks. There's always a reason. You may have to look for it, but it's always there. We want to thank you for joining us this evening and this morning. And you can certainly see this all over again at https colon forward slash forward slash passionateworldtalkradio.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see State of Current Affairs. Click on it, and then you'll see a Google link. Click on that, and that will take you right into the bowels of PWTRN's YouTube account. Scroll down, and you'll see Vicki or my face inside the video, and you can go listen to it. Or if you just want to listen to the audio, go over to the website again passionateworldtalkradio.com forward slash blog and it should be in the blog or you can go over to youtube.com forward slash at passionateworldradio we make it very easy for you facebook.com forward slash passionateworldradio linkedin.com forward slash lillian caldwell and we have about 25 to 30 other social media websites you can find us or go google us Trust me, we're on the first 25 pages of Google. So you really cannot miss us. Now, if you're blind, you can go and let your fingers do the walking. So you really don't have any excuses here. Excuse. Ladies and gentlemen, because we are on 24-7. Now, this program was brought to you by three places. One is by Vicki, who owns a publishing company. And she has a neat service to help you write your memoirs. So if you want to talk about your life or remind your grandchildren or even your great-grandchildren what you had to endure, survive, anywhere from alien tax or matter space to going down <laughs> to the basement of your school with a cold over your head to protect yourself from the lesser known of the two evils atomic bomb, this is a good time to tell your friends, family, peers, and the world about what your life was like and what it was influenced by. So in order to contact Vicki, if you're living in the States or Canada, or even overseas, you can just email us at pwrnetworkllc at gmail.com. We'll need your name, who you are, contact information, and I'll make sure Vicki gets it because this is very important. This is a part of history you need to be included of. This is your opportunity to say, move over famous people because I'm just as important, if not more so than you are. It's also brought to you by PWR Network LLC, where we teach the training of podcasting, whether you're a student, Middle school, high school, college, universities, junior college, continuing education, beginner, intermediate, or even an expert, you can go take a look at https colon forward slash forward slash education dot passionworldtalkradio.com forward slash masterclass. Get all the information there and sign up. Bring a friend because you'll be assigned one. So you guys can learn how to do interviews and ask each other's questions. And trust me, 
if you're going to go for a job interview or you're going yeah. to be grilled by your parents or your teacher for something supposedly you have done, you better learn how to express yourself verbally because the yeah. 21st century is all about yes. verbal and visual. It's all about commu effective communication. It's all about communication. And if you do not know how to communicate either with your voice or your fingers, well, as they used to say, you'll be up a creek without a paddle. It is also brought to you by MyFlex, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash MyFlex dot AI forward slash ESC 73. Artificial intelligence is innovated. It's a no brainer. It's approachable and it's here to stay. And if you want to earn some money while you're doing it, sign up as a brand influencer and start receiving that money that you so desperately want to have for the extras in life, like the Xbox, I guess that's the gaming mechanism. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have some gaming friends who would enjoy signing up with MyFlex.ai. You can certainly use artificial intelligence with gaming. It's also good for anybody who has pain points and you don't need me to remind you of the pain points of research, creating pictures, creating your own music, original music, not copyright music, and no one would ever know. It even helps you write the lyrics. It will help you with your demographics, tell you where to find everybody. Come on, look at all the time you save. I use it to help me do my research and instead of spending months, hours, days, I do it maybe two, three hours. You can't get any easier than that. So please, myflex.ai, excuse me, forward slash ESC73. And get your own virtual assistant for pennies a day, different levels of subscription and it covers everything. It will even help you make sure your work is copyrighted and that nobody else can take it, which the other AI programs can't claim now, can they? No. Well, I'm just telling you from somebody who uses it. As an author, as a writer, I've helped people write speeches with it. Yes, speeches. Maybe the guys in Washington ought to try it. What do you think? Thank you very much. And you can join us all over again next Monday and Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Singapore time or 9.30 a.m. Eastern New York time. Thank you all very much for listening. And remember, contact us and become part of the world and the state of current affairs. <laughs>